Hello, I'm Fenella Kernerbone and welcome. This is a TEDx Sydney adventure and right now I am standing in front of the new Sydney Nanoscience Hub at the University of Sydney and we are here to meet one of our TEDx Sydney alumni speakers, Professor Michael Biersick. We now stand at the precipice of a radical change in the way we build technology. Today we're joined by a group from TEDx Sydney's community and Michael is going to be giving us a tour of his lab but also he is going to be showing us one of his other great passions. This is a TEDx Sydney adventure and it's presented by Toyota Prius. Hi, hey. how are you? Not too bad, how are you? We're going to start by going to Watches of Switzerland, a very fine boutique for extraordinary mechanical watches. Personally, I have a great passion for watches, but the truth is there's a really deep link between the science and measurement of time and the kind of work going on in modern quantum physics. And it's a great pleasure to have David Bryden from Watches of Switzerland who's going to help us understand some of the mechanical mechanisms associated with timekeeping. These watches all work because they have a spring in them. It's a spring that oscillates back and forth, but gravity pulls it down. And gravity pulling downwards distorts the timekeeping. It messes up the tick. Now, the tourbillon developed by Breguet is a system that takes that spring that oscillates back and forth, and he managed to make the whole thing rotate 360 degrees. And by rotating it, you can average away the fact that gravity wants to pull always downward and it really is an absolutely amazing thing to see. It looks like a beating heart. There are 105 parts just in that sphero on there, and they weigh less than 0.5 of a gram. And that is an ant holding a gear. <laughs> so some of these watches, especially the sphero could probably take about a year to make. But now, we want to go and learn about the links between this kind of history and today's research in quantum physics. To see that, we have to go to my laboratory. And there I'm going to show everybody what the kind of most cutting edge work going on in the field of quantum mechanics is. So welcome everybody. This is the Sydney Nanoscience Hub. This is a new research facility that we built in the last few years. It really is a very special building. Everything about it is unusual, from the way we've constructed the concrete in the floor, to the way we do air conditioning, to the way we light these spaces. This is a room that was specifically designed to meet the needs of the kinds of experiments we do. Tight controls on temperature, pressure, mechanical stability, magnetic field stability. The experiments that my group does focus on trapping single atoms cooling them with laser beams, manipulating their internal state, and then using that to build technology. So this system over here is something called an ion trap. It's a special chamber that we've sucked all the air out of. Then we bring in laser beams from all of these systems into the trap. The pressure inside that is similar to the pressure in space near the space station. And we have one atom in that trap right now. And that's a picture in real time of one atom suspended in space. <laughs> now you remember, I told you this morning about the tourbillon, that if you dynamically control the torsion pendulum that's used to give you the tick in your watch, that that dynamic control can make it insensitive to the pull of gravity. Well, there's a challenge in quantum technology that's actually very similar. It's not from gravity, but changes in the environment, like the electromagnetic environment, it's changes in the Earth's magnetic field, all these things can cause our quantum technology to break. My group specializes in the development of these dynamic control techniques, very similar physically to the rotation of the tourbillon, that allows us to average away all this other stuff. That's why we're the quantum control laboratory. It's been incredible, Michael, to be able to spend the day with you, and I also wanted to say thank you to Toyota Prius as well. It's been really wonderful to have this, this day and to explore not only your fascination with timepieces, but to be able to visit uh, your lab here. So, Michael Biersick, thank you so much. You're a legend. Thanks very thank much. You. Oh, today was great. Looking at an atom on the screen, and it's in a vacuum chamber that you can kind of just reach out and touch there. It's really beautiful to see like that juxtaposition of history and modern technology. It was a very interesting relation that I hadn't considered ever before.